I just said, do you want to be in the vlog? Turn the camera on and you spun the butt around. Is that what you think of your fans? You think that your fans want to see your butt first thing in the morning? Heck no! Heck no! Well, guys, <clears throat> last night I decided when I was leaving the concert, I was like, you know what? I went to the concert. I'm not going to be greedy. I'm not going to get a shirt or anything. So I went up and picked up Jaw up at uh, Pollyanna's house. And uh, when I was walking home, and there was a shirt seller there, I think he pretty much given up. He had Bob Marley shirts and Ziggy Marley shirts, and he walks by, and I said, how much for the Ziggy? He said, nobody's buying them. And I was like, I didn't ask that how much, and he goes, five bucks. Apparently, what I got the impression was that everybody that went to that concert that was buying bootleg shirts was buying the Bob Marley shirts and didn't give a hoot about Ziggy. But I do. So I got one. It's got a back, it's got everything. So for five bucks, I got myself a little Ziggy Marley shirt. Well, good morning, Lionhearts. Uh, I gotta figure out what I'm doing today. I have a vlog planned. I'll probably have to do it. I'm trying to figure out, basically what happened is I need to get that glass for my car. And I ordered a piece of glass on Saturday, but they haven't shipped it out and they're not supposed to ship it out till tomorrow. So it's just taking too long. Um, Granted, it's my fault. I waited so long, but I just, I didn't have the money for it, so, um, now my only option is to go down and pick it up, and it's in El Monte, and I don't want to drive my car. I'm not technically supposed to drive until Wednesday. He said you're cleared, but I don't think you should do it until Wednesday, and, um, so I'm trying not to drive, plus a big hole in my, uh, glass, so... I think what I'm going to have to do is take two hours worth of public transportation down to the warehouse where my glass is, pick it up, and then come back. Alright, so we're out for the morning walk, and uh, I was texting Michael this morning because uh, his fiance Christina has like some free days lately, so I just texted him to see if she happened to be in my neighborhood. Sometimes she is, um, and he said that... She was actually out at their house, but that she was going to come by here later, actually like in a couple hours, and she'll take me to uh, grab my glass, since this is like the only free day that she has this week. So, cool. That kind of makes my life a little bit easier. So nice of them. So, 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 so nice of them. And yes, of course, I know the news of the day is that Adam the Woo announced that he's moving to Hollywood, or has moved to Hollywood. Yep, I know. I was with him when he found out. We were literally walking out of the train station and he was telling me that he had uh, applied for a couple of apartments and was uh, waiting to hear back and as soon as we got reception out of the train he looked at his phone showed me his phone and we did a high five so yep gonna have a uh, a new buddy hanging out in the uh, Hollywood proper area good to have him around welcome to the neighborhood and I know he's going to be off looking for furniture. Maybe I'll text him and tell him there's some freebies over here if he wants them. <laughs> and here's the scariest tree stump in the neighborhood. I'm guessing it didn't grow that way. But then again, maybe it did. You never know. Look at that. Wah! Creepy. And the bloody teeth in there, right there. I've never seen this before. I, heck, I never come down this street. I just decided to wander down here today. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, we're heading down to El Monte to get this uh, window, and I can't thank Christina enough. <laughs> thank you so much. No problem. All right, we're here at the auto glass place. How exciting. <laughs> How exciting. And I got a little bit of news while we were driving that I might I might be the backup minister for this wedding. Well, all right, I got the glass, and now I just gotta find somebody to install it. And uh, when I went to pick it up, the guy that was in there, really nice guy, he said, uh, don't let him try and make you buy a new weather strip. You don't need it. Uh, he said it should be fine. Don't If they tell you that you need a new one, they're wrong, so. I don't think I'll have that problem. The guys who usually do this kind of work for me um, are pretty up and up. Uh, they're actually Carrie's father knows a, guy, a bunch of guys that do car repair and he's always been really good about helping me find people that do a 
an honest job that I don't have any problems with in the future, and uh, and they do it pretty affordable. And usually they'll come to my house or let me meet them in an auto zone to do it. So I'm gonna contact them, see if they can do it today, and uh, I gotta go out and go do the vlog. I know what I pretty much wanna do for the vlog, and then I'm gonna meet up with a buddy for a quick bite to eat later. I was just going through some old uh, envelopes, and I just found this, and this just shows how old school I am. Look at what I used to have hanging up on my walls, and I may have to find a new place for it. I forgot I even had this. It's my original Dr. Goldfoot in the Bikini Machine poster. The one that used to actually be in a movie theater display case. And, uh, you read that right. Vincent Price, Frankie Avalon, and Dobie Gillis himself, Dwayne Hickman. Hilarious movie. That's a bikini machine. Alright, I got my good camera, and, uh, I just don't have a wide enough angle lens on it to really do selfies of myself, so I'm still using the camera phone for that. <laughs> but I'm going to go meet up with uh, Adam for a meal. Since the cat's out of the bag that he's now going to be living in Hollywood, I asked him to uh, come over and meet me at one of my favorite uh, Thai places because uh, he's mentioned before that he's a man who could live the rest of his life eating with chopsticks. And uh, I love this place. And they have an iron statue of Elvis inside of here. And I figure since Adam's from Tupelo, Mississippi, what better way to welcome him to Hollywood than to have a meal with a gigantic steel Elvis in the room? Tony Curtis. Oh yeah, you know you're in Hollywood when uh, the local storage facility even has its own star on the walk. All right, my one meal of the day was a great one. Had some great pad thai, and uh, now I'm gonna head off to Paramount and do our vlog for today. I have, for a while, you know, we did the Sanford and Son the other day, but I for a while wanted to do something for Red Fox. And uh, today I kind of finally settled in on how I wanted to do it, where I wanted to do it, and I found, well, an interview with Della Reese, the star of the last TV show that the subject of our vlog today started with. So we're going to go to Paramount. We're going to talk about the ending of the life of Red Fox. Now Red Fox is a man who would even go on to characterize himself as a soft touch. A man who spent or gave away every dollar he had. To everybody but the IRS, Red loved to chase women, and he was one of the most well-known and dirtiest comedians of his day. And when he got Sanford and Son, this is a guy who grew up extremely poor in St. Louis and in Chicago, and when he finally hit it big, he wanted to take everybody along for the ride with him. He would sometimes have an entourage, even in the days before other people had entourage really. 15 people he'd be paying for their food, paying for their hotel, paying for their plane fare. And unfortunately in 1989 in Las Vegas the government came with its coffers to collect. They showed up at Red's house and they took everything. They confiscated everything and in fact the local news channels even caught footage of Red standing out in front of his house in his underwear, shaking his head. According to Red, in an interview later, he would say that they came in and treated him like an animal. They took everything from him. They took his seven cars, including a Model T. They took everything in the house, including a watch that Elvis gave him, all of his clothes, all of his records, his ukulele, everything and left him his bed. Uh, he even said that they took the gold chain around his neck, the identification bracelet on his wrist, and uh, all the cash in his pocket. 
he apparently owed $755,000 in back taxes and uh, lost it all. Now, this was a little confusing to me to an extent because I had read that the last year of his life that he had actually was so poor and so broke that he had opened up a junk shop and was selling what was left of his memorabilia out of there. But uh, I think all of this really played a part in the death of Red Fox because I think if he wasn't in so much debt, he probably wouldn't have done this show. And the years of battling his tax fees, I mean, he had been confronted about owing these back taxes way back in 1983. And uh, he'd been battling it for years, and I think there was just a lot of stress on his heart. So, in order to make some money, which is really strange to think about, a guy who in one year of his life actually made $4 million, and when he was filming Sanford and Son, he was getting 25 grand an episode. Guy, like I said, he just, he just spent. He just spent money and gave money away. And, uh, became one of the biggest regrets of his life. So he ends up signing on to do this new show with Della Reese, Larence Tate from Menace to Society. Well, I think he would eventually go on to do Menace to Society. And they go on to do this show called The Royal Family that filmed over here at Paramount Studios. Since I'm walking by, I'm gonna pop in and see if uh, my buddy Scott's here. I wanna talk to him for a second. Well, unfortunately, Scott was not in, but I did get the answer to the question I had, so that's good. So this is actually credited as the place that Red Fox was first pronounced dead. Now here's the side of Paramount, and this is the side that I like to call the old Desilu, old RKO section of Paramount because where this big blue whale building is, I know I've mentioned it before, um, and I just say it for new subscribers. I hate to repeat myself, but uh, that's the original stage where Star Trek The Next Generation was filmed, and right beside that was stage 27, and that was the stage that the royal family starring Red Fox, Della Reese, Larence Tate, was filming. Now, what I want to focus on is the last day of Red Fox's life, but I have to give you a little bit of backstory because this is actually coming from Della Reese. Della Reese said that there was always kind of a weird rift on the set because um, the producers of this show, I presume by the way she spoke, were probably white would constantly make reference to Red about how they had black friends, knew black people, grew up with black people. And I think just that connotation of using it in a segregatory way rubbed him the wrong way. And so these producers would often try and tell Red how to be funny, how to restructure his jokes and how to be funny. And uh, the stage was actually, see this is 29 right here. The stage that Red Fox passed out on and where the royal family filmed was actually behind there where those satellite dishes are. And I'll walk a little closer. It's actually inside the lot, but um, so what happened was this was a constant ongoing thing where these producers were trying to tell him how to be funny and it really rubbed him the wrong way. And one day in 1991, probably a mixture of dealing with the IRS as well as dealing with these producers, Red was in here actually filming a television interview with Entertainment Tonight. Now, Entertainment Tonight was actually located and filmed right here, right across from where Red's studio was. So they came over to do an interview with Red, and the royal family was actually doing a dress rehearsal on the main stage. And they had a stand-in doing Red's part because there were no actual lines, just Red was supposed to walk behind uh, Della Reese while she was saying a line. And the producer walked in, saw that Red was not there doing the part and flipped out. So like I said, the stage would have actually been right over here. So the producer storms into the room where Red's giving his interview with Entertainment Tonight, breaks up the, the filming, 
and says that Red's needed on the stage. So Red walks over to the stage, finds out that what they were actually going to be filming or what they were rehearsing didn't even have any dialogue and he got extremely angry and pretty much immediately just fell over. Now Della Reese says that she thought that he was just doing a pratfall because he did that kind of stuff all the time and so she walks over and says, Red, get up. And he didn't get up and she said, she leaned down and said, Red, get up. And he said, get my wife, get my wife. This was Red's fourth wife and from what I understand, apparently it was a mail order bride. But um, they called the paramedic, they went and got his wife and at this stage, Red was actually pronounced dead. The paramedic took him to the hospital. Della Reese says that the whole uh, staff followed him over. The hospital was actually able to bring him back to life for about four and a half hours before uh, the doctor came out and said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Fox, your husband's gone. And uh, she said she would never forget that those two producers were standing right next to her, right in front of Mrs. Fox. One looks at the other and says, well, what do we do with the script now? The whole episode's based around Red and Della. What are we supposed to do now? And Della Reese said, I was so mad, I went off on everybody. She said, I mean, if, if I would have died and they would have said that in front of my kids or my husband, I'd have had to come back from the grave. And once I'm dead, I don't want to come back. But she said that uh, she always thought it was extremely disrespectful that the show went on without him. Um, she said that there was no writing him out of the show, there was no send off, there was no respectful um, outing for him. They just started the next episode with a black screen that said, you know, his birth and death dates and then Jack A was part of the part of the new cast and it went on and she just said, you know, no offense to Jack A, she's a good comedian, but that was that was not the way to approach it and especially somebody from his comedic uh, legendary status to treat him that way and to go out that way it was just it was just humiliating. And that's where the royal family would have filmed and Red would have collapsed. Can you believe that? No respect at all. He actually, from what I read, died uh, beyond penniless. He was actually like $3 million in debt, left nothing behind. So right over here on the right, I was actually wrong. This is where Entertainment Tonight filmed, but I said that uh, the Royal Family was filmed on stage 27, but it wasn't, because stage 27's over here. That's where the Royal Family was being filmed. Now this is the side entrance into uh, Hollywood Forever and the reason I'm going to come in here is because at the very least I'll be able to show you the back of the stage, the sound stage. So it actually would have been that building right over there. The Dr. Phil stage would be the building on the other side of those shrubs and this right here would have been the back of the sound stage. Well. They actually have the door open for Judy Garland's grave now, so let's go in and take a look. I absolutely remember the day that Red Fox died. I remember I watched that show every week. Um, I always look forward to the Owl Royal treatment. He was an awesome, grumpy old man, and uh, so sad. I, uh, I've been by that stage. I've never actually worked on that stage, so I don't know what the feeling is of it or whether it's got a haunted vibe, but if I ever get in there, I'll be sure to mention whether or not I feel anything. You can bet on that. Now, many people often wondered why Red didn't ask Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, or one of these guys that he was friends with for money to help him out. He actually said he would have, but he didn't know they were going to come confiscate everything, uh, which was sad. But in the end, when he died, he got a funeral and send off it for a king, all paid for by the generosity of Eddie Murphy. 
It is not often you see somebody throw away a framed picture of Audrey Hepburn. It's a sick world. So I had mentioned when Christina and I got to the uh, place to pick up my glass that I am now the alternate uh, possible minister for their wedding. Michael is trying to apply to get their marriage license in Sweden. He's already convinced that they're going to mess this up, that the Swedish government will somehow mess this up. And so if they do and he can't get the ceremony done in the church, and that means the person who is supposed to officiate it won't be officiating it, so they need to back up. Because I am an ordained minister, so and I have a 100% rating. I have only uh, performed one ceremony, Carrie and Ben, and they're still together, so I'm the best option. Let's go walk over there. That is not a real 100, but it sure had me fooled for a second. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the uh, Red Fox vlog today. That was one I really wanted to do, and uh, I think it turned out pretty cool. Now, I did mention in the video that I had heard he had a pawn shop or like a uh, basically like a junk store when he was really in debt the last couple of months of his life, and uh, but I couldn't confirm it. I actually found a video online on YouTube called Red Fox, his last video. I'm gonna link it in the um, comments below, like in the section below, and uh, feel free to watch it. You can watch um, people shopping inside the store. You'll actually see Red, Aunt Esther, Grady, and Bubba. All four of them inside the store. Um, kind of like a San Francisco reunion. And uh, man, what a sad story this all was. But I hope you all will uh, pay your respects to Red Fox next time San Francisco's on. And give it a try. Give it a watch if you haven't seen it before. Because uh, he was a great comedian and I love him. And this is just a sad story to think about. But uh, I wanted to thank Matt W. for becoming a new Patreon, and I will see you all tomorrow. Good night. Bye.